through another example and we want to analyze the circuit of figure 6.25 which we're given here that's a and it's to determine the voltages of all nodes in the current through the branches so this is kind of similar to what we did previously except now we are just doing it a little bit on a different circuit so we can see here that we have split supplies meaning we have a plus 10 volts to the top and a minus 10 volts to the bottom of our circuit that means the bias to the base is in the middle. If we have a positive supply in ground, then we would use a different kind of circuit to bias the base supplies, and this will be shown in the future. So let's only look at what we have on the left and start filling things out. So that is going to match B. We're going to use something, if not exactly the same, as similar to the author's solution provided right here. So looking at this, what kind of circuit is this? Well, if we look at the notes linked below the like button, the way that this is drawn out here, it's going to be a PNP, and we can now use this knowledge to solve for this. Well, we know that our VBE, we've gone over this previously, is about 0 0.7 volts. So we are going to solve for this. We need to place our voltage base emitter. And well, if this is uh, PNP, that means that the uh, base is going to be right here, right? So that means that our VBE is going to be above the base. So that means that this is going to be right here. So VBE is equal to about VE, which is equal to about 0 0.7 volts. So that so far matches. Now let's keep going. Well, we want to find the current through here. Right, because this would be the like IE, and that's going to be the emitter current, right? Because we know that this is the voltage E, and so the current IE makes sense to go with that. So IE is equal to, we are going to have the voltage of the source, so V source, minus the voltage of our whatever is below it, so I'll just call this the base, which is really VE in this instance, and this is going to be over the resistance that it goes over, which is the RE. So this is going to be 10 minus 0 0.7 over our 2 kilo ohms, and that's going to give us 4.65 milliamps. So that also matches up as well. So we can erase these and just go off with the author's work for this. So 0 0.7 volts for our, we know that this is, I'll keep this here, it's going to be our VE, and then our IE is going to be the 4.65 milliamps. We can keep going, so after we have both of these, we can solve for our collector. That's the next easiest thing to do. So for our collector, it's going to be down here. We know we're going to have our VC, and then we of course are going to have our IC, and we're going to solve these in similar ways. So our VC is going to be equal to, of course, our Ohm's law. So we have our negative 10 volts plus the um, voltage over this part right here. And well, the voltage going into here is just going to be the uh, current times our actual um, resistor right here, because we have current times resistance. So it's going to be IC times our RC. Well, we don't know what our IC is yet, so let's try to solve for that. Our IC is going to be equal to, well, we can figure this out if we use the notes link below the like button. IC, if we scroll down a little bit here, I've included it. Our IC is going to be equal to, there's a couple different things that we can use. So that's a note in the author's part right here that we need to take note of, and we need to memorize this. If no values of the beta are given, we're going to assume beta is equal to 100. That's an important part right there, and I was looking for that a second ago. So beta is equal to 100, meaning that when we write our IC out, we're going to say IC is equal to, we're going to have our IB times our, uh, well, we don't know our IB yet, so actually we're not going to write, we're not going to use that equation. The equation that we're going to be using is this one right here. So we want our IC, and it's equal to, our alpha, which is just going to be beta over beta plus 1, times our IE, which we found earlier to be 4.65 milliamps. And that is going to be the same thing as this right here. So that's going to give us that equation. 
um, it's going to give us uh, 4.6 milliamps. So that's going to be the current for our IC. And now we can just plug it into our VC. So we have our IC and our RC, which is one kilo ohm. So now we can erase all this. I'll rewrite the VC in now that we found it. And I'll probably have this section that we circled in red here included in the notes, link below if it's not already in there. So now we have our VC, we are VE and our IE and our IC. And lastly, we need to find the current over this. We know that the voltage here is equal to zero. So the current, which is for our B, is equal to, let's solve for this. Well, I of B, what equation are we going to use? We can use this one right here since we know our IC now. Our IC is the 4.6 milliamps, so we would just have 4.6 divided by the 100 for beta. And it looks like that's something similar to what the author did right here, um, except he has a beta plus one. So that's going to be it. That's how we would solve this problem. That's how we would go about doing it, solving each individual part, putting it together just like a puzzle, like how we've done previously. We have more notes down here. Obviously, the value of beta or B critically affects the base current. Note, however, that in this circuit, the value of B will have no effect on the mode of operation of the transistor since beta is generally an ill-specified parameter. This circuit represents a good design as a rule. One should strive to design the circuit such that its performance is as intensive to the value of beta as possible. That way, we're not relying on beta. If beta changes, uh, it's still going to be okay. Analysis details are listed or illustrated in our figure B, which we use to verify the way we solve this problem.